Sonic, you finally found your family. Try to keep up. I know it hasn't always been easy. Sonic! But you didn't change who you are in here. Yeah. In my lungs. Or your heart. There's been a high-level security breach. And we need Team Sonic's immediate... Big assistance. Shadow coming through. Project Shadow is far beyond anything we've ever encountered. He looks good. Shadow's story began a lot like your Sonic. But were you... Oh, shit! So they're doing... They are doing Sonic Adventure 3, uh, 2, I mean. Because I, I didn't know... You couldn't... You really couldn't tell. You, it, they might have did, like, a loose interpretation where... They just brought in Shadow and he became like a villain. But they've got Maria. I'm going to assume that's Maria. Maria, I miss you. Shadow found only pain and loss. Darkness. All right. We got a rogue alien on the loose. How do we find him? Maria getting clapped. Start with the giant Shadow going to go crazy. I love it. Let's start with a giant fireball. Sonic Adventures. I mean, Sonic Heroes, that's like the, uh... Impressive than the hedgehog I fought previously. Dude. Yo, it looks crispy, the artwork. That shit looks really good. Like, how the fuck are the movies better than the games right now, man? Even when y'all win, the Sonic community, let me talk to y'all, Sonic community. Even when y'all win with the movies, y'all still lose, because y'all games suck. I'm on y'all niggas' heads. Than the hedgehog I <laughs> I'm standing right here. You're colorful, punch. We don't want to fight you. Actually, Sonic, I would like to fight. No, no, no. Yeah. My turn. Can we just talk about this? Oh, you know what's crazy too? Like, yeah, they're doing an interpretation of Sonic Adventure 2. Because if I remember correctly, when he when Shadow first pulled up, he was standing on top of a building, right? And this, he's standing in the car, and then you were, like, fighting the robots. It had, like, that little circle area, too. The only difference is it was him and Sonic, from what I remember. But, like, that's even that's, like, a callback to the game to a certain degree. Can we just talk about this? He's too powerful. That was a cool animation, him skating. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we need you know who. This is a bad idea. When has that ever stopped me? <laughs> He's finally fat. <laughs> this is sad, Robotnik, even for you. We need your help on one condition. What? Do this! If I can't rule the world, I might as well save it. I need room. But sir, I don't have the proper materials. It's time for Super Sonic. Did you see the second movie, bro? I don't want to spoil it for nobody who hasn't seen it. But, uh... <laughs> you said you have it? Oh, uh, that was actually one of my main critiques of the second movie. I'm curious of where they're going to go because... My, I like the second movie, but my main critique of the second movie is... I, I'll go ahead and spoil it. If you haven't seen it, whatever. He goes supersonic in the second movie. And that was kind of my main critique of it. Like, they kind of scaled the power a little bit too high. And once you start playing with, like, those high power levels, like the Super Saiyan type of shit, it starts to become more of a spectacle. So, in my opinion, if I could advise them, which we know Hollywood is not going to do that because they like to milk things, I think they should end the series at the third movie. Because if they don't, it's probably going to get out of control like Dragon Ball and it's going to become less. I think the reason these movies work well is because they're telling a genuinely good story, at least for kids. Like it's a good kid story, right? Once you start getting into that spectacle realm, you have to continue to amp up the spectacle, uh, which in turn, it brings down the quality of the writing. Uh, and that's what I'd be worried about if they do more than three movies. There won't be anything right. Hey, no cheat code. What did you do? What I had to. It looks Welcome fire. Home, my boy. 
So grandpa's confirmed. Possible. Is it? It could be a Kira slide. Yeah. Oh, that I did. That was. That was when he did that little angle right there. That sure was. He did the Akira slide. Even like the art style with the red and shit. Yeah. Welcome home, my boy. It's impossible. Is it? It couldn't be. Couldn't it? I am. Are you? In the saggy flesh. Oh, shit. What the fuck? What the fuck? Bro, I don't want to see this shit. It looks good. So, yeah, it's going to be like a loose interpretation of Sonic Adventure 2. Um, I think it looks good. This is a day 1C. I think it actually looks really good. Um freaking i'm excited i don't got nothing else to say about it yeah disgusting you think they're gonna reference that disgusting black creatures get out of my sight um i the one thing i will say and they should save it for the movie they shouldn't put it in the trailer because like a lot of y'all in the chat were like yo where's his guns at i want it to be in the movie like it's just got to be like they don't even need to actually make him shoot just give him like a gun for like a quick scene or something as a joke or something like that no rouge or amy though you can't show everything in the trailer you can't show everything in the trailer um so if like Rouge shows up it'd probably be in the movie y'all always complain that the trailers spoil everything they need to just show i feel like they showed more than enough they're like okay i definitely want to see this day one this is going to be a banger um but once again like i said even though this movie honestly looks fire sonic community still takes an l because your games suck um what else we got for y'all what else yeah they showed enough i don't i don't want to see too much i want to go to the movie theaters and and be excited if they don't sound like the sub alerts, I don't want them in the movie. <laughs> Shout it. Uh, we got some rumors out here floating around. Where my Bloodborne, uh, Bloodborne heads at? My Souls fans at? I don't know where this is coming from because I don't know this account. Jevish. So take this with a super grain of salt. I've seen this on my For You page. I don't know who this person is. Everybody's got a check mark now. Uh, according to a rumor, a new Bloodborne project is in development. A new Bloodborne project is reported in development at Sony Interactive. Unclear as to whether it's a remake, a remaster, or a sequel. The source previously stated that a Bloodborne movie was in the works at the PlayStation Productions. Um, let's see. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. That's all it. Take it with a grain of salt because he doesn't. He says his source is Daniel Rock, but then he doesn't link it. That's why I said take the shit with a super grain of salt. I just seen it on my For You page. I know you little Bloodborne. Top five most annoying fan bases. Bloodborne is up there. I know y'all are really excited. Uh, yeah, we'll take this with a will see. Did you watch the Shadow gameplay from Sonic Shadows? I've seen enough. I'm going to get the game. I, I bought the collector's edition for that giant. I'm going to play it. Um, it leads back to a Sony hiring post, but there's no evidence. It's just engagement farming. Yeah, take it with a grain of salt. You know what's not a grain of salt, though? It has been confirmed that one of the biggest games of the year, Foam Stars, a PS4 classic. It is on PS4. It is going free to play as of October 4th, 2024. You guys memed it the fuck up. Uh, like you guys are going to play this. For those unaware, Foam Stars is PlayStation's version of Splatoon. But instead of squirting paint, they squirt suds. Um, everybody was on social media hyping this game up. The game came out. Literally nobody played it. And lucky for PlayStation, there's no way to properly track the numbers on how many people are playing because i if i had a sneaky suspicion it'd probably be just as many people playing as concord um matter of fact speaking of concord that segues me into my next joint um we thought suicide squad was the biggest dud of the year <sighs> this is bad man this this i thought it was gonna be bad but this is bad you know when the internet kicks something they kick it last week when concord was um when it launched it peaked at like 600 players 660 players all time as of this morning there were less than 100 people playing let's see steam db let's do a suicide squad update suicide squad there are more people playing suicide squad than concord and suicide squad came out in february this is nasty work TBH and Ethos said the character designs were solid. The character designs for what? Oh, you're talking about like, oh, uh, in Concord? Like the character kits, yeah. I didn't like the way some of the characters looked, but the character kits were okay, yeah. Is the game even bad? No, I'm gonna be honest. This is unfortunate. I, I said on the podcast, this game is not bad. I thought it was cool for 40 bucks. And I would have got it if more people wanted to play it, but I'm not gonna buy a game nobody's playing. Um, the internet decided to shit on this game and it never, it never had a chance. 
but this was honestly a solid based off what i played it was like a 7.5 8 um hero shooter but people decided they didn't want to play it and the crazy part is i've seen a lot of people say that oh we don't want to play it because we're tired of hero shooters and live service games but then somebody in my chat just came in here and said yo you playing smite 2 did you see they just announced um split gate 2 y'all love lives yo yo people are so inconsistent about their opinions y'all love these live service games just say you weren't interested in this game concord didn't die it was deadlocked yeah um what's the new um what's the new uh game that shroud announced that's gonna be live service they just love free shit and the crazy part is this game was 40 bucks no dlc well, well, it was going to have DLC, but it was going to be free. It was going to have store, new stories in the... They was doing something ambi ambitious. I, I think that's another thing that kind of annoys me about this game and why it never got a chance. They were actually trying to do something ambitious. For those who didn't know, it was a hero shooter with a story. And every week, they were going to drop a new cutscene with a new bit of story in it. I've never seen anybody do that in the game before. And I was genuinely curious to see if they were going to be able to pull it off. Because that's super ambitious. That's a lot of content. Like, how the fuck are you going to do that? dropping new big content drops like every week i don't think that's gonna happen now i don't think this game gonna make it out of 2024 um niggas don't want to pay 40 bucks for a complete game it's a weird time we're in people would rather play a free-to-play game where they nickel and dime you than pay 40 bucks and get the whole game and it's solid first time in the stream what up jazz so unfortunately i'm gonna have to go ahead and say like this game is probably it's probably the fuck up out of here by the end of 2024 if not by mid 2025 don't be surprised if I bring up an article. They shutting down the servers. If they don't shut them down sooner, because you never want to say never, it's because of pride. Sony really wants a live service game. They might just keep paying for the servers or something like that, but it's, it's bad. Um, paying 40 bucks for a game style that is constantly offered for free. Get the fuck out of here. I mean... I guess Overwatch, they nickel and dime in you. It's really not. That's the thing about free to play games. I, I feel like y'all focus too much on the word free, failing to realize those games aren't free. Y'all paying for shit. You're paying, when you do the math, you're actually paying more than a full price game. Oh, the first disappointment. I'm not going to yell. I'll go ahead and say it. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. But a lot of y'all came in my chat asking me if I was going to play the first disappointment, the first descendant. Y'all was talking like the first Descendant was a contender for game of the year. That shit was fire. Concord is a better game than the first Descendant. But the difference is the first Descendant is free. <laughs> I, I'm just calling Cap. You're allowed to dislike this game, but I got to call Cap on a lot of the way that some of y'all be behaving about these damn games. Um, totally forgot the first Depressant came out. I disagree and I hate the first descendant. We can agree to disagree. Mid Sendent at least got ass in it. <laughs> Space Marine has a roadmap and all the updates are gonna be free, excluding the season pass, which looks to be cosmetic items. A hey. hey. speaking of live service games, that actually takes me into my next article. Man, we've had some good segues today. Uh, according to this article, Crash Bandicoot 5 was canceled to focus on live service games. Now, if you guys keep asking, why do they keep making live service games? Because y'all love them. Y'all love buying these $40 skins. Y'all love those loot crates. Y'all love those microtransactions. It's no secret that developer Toys of Bob was working on Crash Bandicoot 5. However, a report regarding the canceled game unearthed new information, including the reason behind the cancellation and details of a crossover between the titular character and Spyro the Dragon. Wait, what? I didn't know that. That actually kind of upsets me. I, was, I wasn't a huge fan of Crash Bandicoot. Objectively, Crash Bandicoot 4 is a good game. I'm just biased. I'm not a fan of Crash Bandicoot. But objectively, it was a good game. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it... But, like, they were working on a crossover between them and Spyro, and they canceled it? That would have been fire. A new report from Did You Know Gaming reveals... Uh, loads of new details about the Crash Bandicoot 5 from its early inception to its inevitable demise. The canceled game was potentially Toys for Bob's most ambitious project. Crash Bandicoot 5 was intended to be a direct mainline sequel to Crash 4. It's about time and bringing back characters from the series past. The original plot focused on the Academy of Evil, which introduced in Crash Twin Sanity. The school staff would have included past Crash Bandicoot villains like these people, Tiny Tiger, I remember him, uh, Dr. Jen, 
uh, Dr. Neo Cortex with levels based on each character's consciousness similar to Psychonauts. Plans shifted as the scope of Crash 5 began to grow. The developer would soon land on Uka Uka as its main antagonist. The story saw the evil mask gain access to interdimensional portal hidden beneath the academy. This would bring him to the world of Spyro the Dragon, in which he would use magic to corrupt the Dragon Elders, threatening both Spyro and Crash, respective dimensions. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. We're losing recipes. We're losing recipes for live service games. We are losing recipes for live service games, man. We're losing. We lost this game for the first depression. Like I said, y'all love them $40 skins. Could have started the Sony verse. Yeah. Why was it canceled? Um, oh, wait, hold on. Let me read the rest of it. Uh, plans shifted a scope for Crash Bandicoot 5 began to grow. The developers would soon... Oh, wait. Crash and Spyro were the main playable characters in Crash 5. Nina Cortex and Coco was also in consideration. Some interactions between Spyro and Crash were conceptualized like Crash riding on Spyro's back. They would have had team-up moves, bro. And Spyro aiding in Crash's platforming. They would have had team-up moves. Work on Crash 5 lasted around three to four months between summer of November 2020 with Crash 4. So this was recent. <sighs> Despite its critical success, Crash 4 did not reach its Activision sales target. Translation. The game sold a few million copies. It sold pretty good. But it didn't sell like Call of Duty. It didn't sell like the microtransactions in Overwatch. According to the video, Activision was steering clear from... And that's because y'all love that shit. From single player games in favor of multiplayer live service games like Call of Duty or Over. <laughs> I haven't read this article, by the way. Toys of Bob would become a support studio for Call of Duty. That sucks, man. They were making a creative game and they got absorbed into the Call of Duty studio. That sucks. Uh, 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 uh. The jokes write themselves. Hey, but I'm an asshole when I say this stuff. Remember, it may not apply to you. About buying all these microtransactions and playing all these live service games. But the people on your friends list, they don't give a fuck about good games. They want to play Call of Duty. Yo, shout out to Heyman's RIP. This is a shame. Hopefully one day they can find a way to resurrect the game or something like that, man. That sucks. Um, Visions of Mono reviews have come out. People have been asking me if I'll play this. I'll probably end up buying it, playing it on my own time. This is a game I can't stream. People don't care about this game for the for the most part. People don't really care about this game. Uh, this is a more niche game. The amount of people that keep paying for skins at these prices need their heads examined. I'm saying, bro. I'm saying I might end up getting it. Yeah, I like the last one, but when I streamed it, like a lot of people didn't watch. Like I understand it's a very niche type of RPG, but it is a good series. Um, it's sitting at a 77 overall Metacritic or Open Critic, pretty much an eight. So yeah, if you were interested in the game, just putting that out there. The mashup between them and the slam would have been a slam dunk for Sony. I'm saying the rivalry would it would have been reignited. Uh, wasn't it this game during COVID? I believe the last one did come out. You telling me buying Nicki Minaj in Warzone was a bad move? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Developers are reportedly delaying games so they can release uh, after the PS5 Pro launches. Presumably, devs are delaying their games to avoid having a release a PS5 Pro patch later. Um, this is a rumor, by the way, so take it with a grain of salt. But like, I'm not going to lie. I probably believe this one. If you're a developer, that would be the smart thing to do. Like, why why release your game now and then have to work on a patch later when you could just work on both versions of... Um, together uh the rumor is that the ps5 pro is still supposed to come out this year i don't know when they're gonna announce it but apparently it's supposed to be 45 percent more powerful than the ps5 which is sounds crazy uh i was thinking maybe like a 25 percent boost but they saying 45 percent uh we'll see uh but take this all with a grain of salt um all i'm gonna say is don't be surprised if you see some playstation games start to get delayed basically um and matter of fact, if we do start to see a bunch of PlayStation games get delayed, I will say that might mean this is true. So we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to keep an eye on this. What's the price on it? The rumor is was $600 that I read yesterday, uh, which means the price of the PS5, the base PS5, would probably come down to like $300 or something like that. 
what's so hard to understand about people paying for things they like, but you always want to say somebody broke. Why do y'all make disingenuous arguments? All right, let's listen to the context of what I be saying, because now I'm going to get you. Um, you're allowed to like live service games. The point I'm trying to make is if you look at the comment section on YouTube videos, Twitter spaces, social media posts, people complain about the lack of creativity, all these remasters from Naughty Dog and all that other shit. I think you're missing the point. I'm not saying you can't play live service games. I'm saying the audio doesn't match the visuals. A lot of gamers say one thing and do something else. So the reason I bring this up is not to chastise, it's to show cap on the rap. The point I'm trying to make is a lot of gamers are Russell Westbrook. This is y'all. Say do one thing, say one thing and then do another. Y'all eating in that corner, all them damn microtransactions. Damn, I can't get a, a, a moving joint? Dun, 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 dun. You're missing the point. He said, I heard a six. No, I didn't even deserve a 600. It didn't even deserve a 600. But like, yo, it, <laughs> let's comprehend. Uh, geez, man. Let's comprehend. But the gaming community isn't a monolith. Many folks do like live service games and many don't. Yeah, some people do, obviously. But there's a lot of people who complain that they don't. But then the stats say otherwise. I'm strictly talking to those people. I'm not talking to the people that like it. If you are a person that loves live service games and you believe in that and buying all those microtransactions... I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people who swear that they hate it because the numbers say otherwise. You don't accidentally, every month for PlayStation and Xbox, the top games are Roblox, GTA, Call of Duty, um, Fortnite, and you don't get to that top five just because there's people who who would love to say that they love those games it's also people secretly playing this i'm saying you a lot of you niggas are liars that's the point i'm trying to make fifa madden 2k yeah they're hypocrites that's the point i'm not chastising anybody because they like it i'm saying you're lying and that's exactly the point i'm trying to make is numbers don't lie you can't say you want something and then you don't support it that's all i'm talking about but niggas get so in their feelings because they love fortnite season 45 they don't hear what the fuck i'm saying so now i gotta fry you What's wrong? What's wrong with paying for a forty dollars skin? If you want to buy it, that's fine. Just understand the repercussions that come with that. That's all. <laughs> Do we have an understanding now? Do we have an understanding now? People who like live service games usually don't care about the rest of gaming. Oh, it's on social media too. They act like they do. That's and that's the point I'm trying to make. You ever put a dollar or two? Maybe I gotta start bringing up some comments so y'all can see what the fuck I be talking about. There are different communities in gaming. Uh. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Gen Z people, they don't listen or they listen and they don't comprehend. It's like I got to break everything down in like a super scientific way for people. Uh, the people that play live service games have no taste in video games at all. The most bland shit is, I mean, it's all subjective. Once you, once you pass a certain like threshold in quality, it all becomes subjective because it's art, right? My my main thing is like if you like live service games, the only thing I ask is be a bit be a good consumer, right? Uh, have some self control. If you like playing live service games, do you have to buy every fucking skin? Especially, I this is the part that throws me off about live service games. Niggas bitch and complain about Apex Legends all the fucking time, but y'all niggas are still buying them loot crates. That's the part I'm talking about reward the developers because the game is good but if you don't like it and you keep you keep playing it and buying the shit that's the part that confuses me um why the stream is starting to glitch out because your internet sucked um <laughs> for skins they can't even see half the damn time but there's layers to the conversation now nah, apex players are different when it comes to that shit nah nah i don't do that no jokes aside i mean i looked at my obs i haven't dropped any frames i think it's your internet i'm not, I'm not trying to be funny <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we have a better understanding you know let's not look at things surface level and let's try to actually understand what people are saying i got a few heirlooms i can't cap thank you keep it real keep it real that's all i'm saying keep it real you know late last night it was late at night you was feeling yourself you said let me drop 20 real quick that 20 turned to 40 then to 60 to 100 to 200 that's all i'm saying bro uh it's like how I was told that I had to be a diehard to see the NBA 2K5 to understand the improvements that 2K made. No, it's an update. 
that's actually a great point, TBH, because now the data is skewed. Companies make decisions on skewed data. Ding, 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 ding. That's what I'm talking about. There's layers to the conversation. I'm telling you, we got to bring debates back to school. I've been talking to my girl about this shit. Like, I almost want to do, because I think there's a new feature where people can call into your Twitter, your Twitch stream or something like that. I got to look to see how that works. I almost want to debate some people on it so people can understand and have conversations. But then, like, I'm hesitant to, like, debate people on stream because, like, I don't want people saying crazy shit on my stream. Yeah, it's called knock. Yeah, I don't want people, like, I'm kind of hesitant because you let somebody on the stream and they just start spray saying, like, racial slurs and shit. Support the game, LOL. The amount of abuse that is clouded through the word addiction and sunken cost fallacy. Shit is crazy. Be a good consumer. That's all I'm saying, bro. Like I like if there's like a hot topic, be like, all right, who disagrees with me? Hop in the Discord. What you disagree about? I'm knocking every time you mention Drake. <laughs> um, and last but not least, because I'm tired of talking about live service games. Excuse me. Last but not least, we got an update on the leader. The leader, one of the leaders. I don't say the leader, but one of the leaders of the go woke go broke crowd. He's one of the uh, one of the one of the debate leaders on Twitter, his name is Grums. You can find him grifting all the time about different games and DEI. Some news has come out about him. Apparently, he doesn't pay child support, allegedly. Niggas is back. <laughs> the internet has found some paperwork on Grums. <laughs> all right, hold on. Hold on. Let me get my NBA's. <laughs> Let me get some shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Now, according to some people on Twitter, this nigga is too busy ranting on Twitter about DEI samurais and every game being woke. They pulled the paperwork up and they say he don't pay his child support. Now, is this real? I don't know. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. People Photoshop shit. But I was scrolling through the conversation and people said they searched this shit up and they said it's real. <laughs> Apparently, allegedly, this nigga don't take care of his kids. But he's on Twitter talking about protect the kids from the woke agenda. This shit is fucking funny, bruh. This shit is fuck. Too busy grifting on Twitter. Goofy ass niggas, bruh. This is y'all here. This y'all king? This y'all king? The loudest niggas always be the biggest. Well, I always say this shit, bruh. You gotta watch these niggas, bruh. So we have an update on the DEI Samurai. <laughs> I want to know who made him that mad to get that. That's why I say you, you got to be careful what you say on the fucking internet. Especially if you got some dirt out there. You better chill the fuck out. Yeah, he looks bad right about now. Go take care of your kids, nigga. 